Yo! G'day everybody, Craig Cobb here of TraderCobb.com. Alright, so I'm going to wait for a few more people to uh, hop on in. But I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we've been seeing lately uh, with these pump and dump scheme type things. And just give you a little bit of... Um, I don't know, a dose of reality, maybe, uh, a little heads up, a little uh, caution, maybe. All of the above, potentially, is what you know, what I'll be trying to provide you with. Because, um, I, look, I've seen pump and dump groups before, mainly in crypto. Um, you do see runs on equities. It's usually the lower cap equities that you see it on. Um, and it... It, it certainly created a huge amount of interest over the last week or two weeks. Um, but yeah, there's some things that we need to be aware of. And I just want to make sure, because they will happen again. It might not be the same group, but I tell you right now, it will happen again. So hello all that are there. So good day. Where, whereabouts are we all tuning in from, by the way? Satoshi Nakamoto is in the room. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, Ionesca, Ionesca, oh, Ionescu, I hope I pronounced that right, I'm not very good with that sort of stuff, my apologies, um, yeah, just seeing where we are all coming from, I'm trying to do it at a time where there still might be some people in the US, uh, also Australia, New Zealand, whatnot, hey, Chuck, how are you, mate, all right, so I want to, um, now jump across, and, uh, point out, g'day, David in Perth, righto, so morning still for you, nice, want to, um, yeah, show you the chart, so Melbourne, righto, few, few Mel Melbournians, Mel Melbourneites, Southerners, <laughs> Brizzy, sweet, uh, Goldie, a lot of Australians, not surprising really, it is the Australian daytime, and, um, yeah, welcome, 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 and um, don't forget, please like, share, uh, hit the notifications, subscribe, thumbs up, all those, all those things. It does help the post boost it, that sort of thing. Uh, from the states, lovely, Br Brizzy, a global pump and dump. It is something. So let's have a look. All right, and look, ask me questions throughout. This is an open forum. I'm here. I've learned a lot myself uh, throughout this um, Wall Street bets Reddit saga. Um, I wasn't as certain as I am now. And yeah, I mean, it's easy to say with hindsight. I'm not using hindsight. Uh, I've just been able to see what it's done because this was a social experiment on a different level. It was still the same pump and dump type thing that we've seen in crypto many times before. Uh, and the reason I want to do something on this is to give some perspective um, and, and relate it back to some of the things I think that you're going to um, relate to and understand because it's how I sort of strung it together to come to the conclusion that I have done and um, I just wanted to share it. Simple stuff. Just wanted to share it. Okay, so it all starts really with GameStop, Wall Street bets, all that sort of thing. That's where it starts. All right. Now, the thing is, yes, I mean we can clearly see here on GameStop. You know, I don't know when the call went out or whenever it was, but let's go from here when it started to move to the high. It did a ten x. Now that took the company up into the multi billions in valuation and um, it really, you know, blasted off. And if you recall, if you've been following what had been going on, what you will find is that it was buy and hold. It was buy and hold, don't sell, don't sell, hold. Now let's come back to the very beginning of this, the very root of, um, you know, why this gets done. It's not for the good of mankind. Okay, not for the good of humankind. It's not for anything other than profiteering. People want to make money. And everybody loves a get-rich-quick scheme. You know, it, it's, it's the gambling nature that we all inherently have in us. Some have it more than others, but it is there. And it is, it's real. Now, if somebody says to you, I'm going to make you a bunch of money really quickly, you want to believe that. You really want to believe that especially if you've not got money already, because you know, you know, sorry, you might not know that that's not how people with money make it. Not typically anyway. About as close to the get rich quick as you can possibly have in a duration of time is probably what we 
experienced in cryptocurrency through 2017 and even into now. You could have bought Bitcoin at $4,500 in March of 19. That's, you know, not even a year ago. And now we're at what, 35,000 or 36? I, I, off the top of my head, I can't remember. It's on the charts here, but that's not the sort of um, point of the video. Sydney, g'day guys. Hello, Will, Mel, David. So look, the, um, the big thing to understand is, okay, people want to make money. Got that? With the, there's two things. There's two things that really feed into the psyche of the individual, especially the one who may not have invested before uh, or who may have harbor, they may harbor uh, negative thoughts towards, let's say, the hedge fund managers, the billionaires, um, the big bankers, that sort of thing. Um, they may harbor those issues around those sorts of people. So now we get a, we're going to get rich quick, power to the people, and let's screw the system. You know, they screwed us. Let's screw the system. And they want to do it in equities, which is an, it's, a, it's a regulated market. And what they did was not illegal as far as I'm aware. I am not a, you know, I'm not a, a lawyer. I don't work for the SEC or any governments for that matter. Never have. And I won't say never will because you never know what comes around the corner. But I doubt it very much. Uh, but they went through that. So you've got the get rich quick. Stick it to the man and screw the billionaire hedge fund managers that are shorting equities. Right, tick that box. We got a good understanding for that. So what are we going to do? Well, we're all going to buy GameStop. We're going to buy GameStop because we know that there's a lot of shorts out on this company. Now, what I want to do is this. I want to rewind you back to the global financial crisis of 2007, 8, 9, throughout that period when it was really, really hectic and really, really bad. Then I want to remind you of a movie or a book, depending on what you got first, or if you've watched the movie and read the book, The Big Short. Now, this is Christian Bale, you know, the sort of, you know, the, you know on the spectrum, um, Asperger's type. Uh, he plays the drums and he's just this super brain and a bunch of others also within that film as well. And they looked at Subprime and they worked like all hell to get short on it. They work like hell, and it kept on going up, and it kept on burning them. It kept on burning them, but their level of conviction was so strong because they'd done the research. They, this is what they done. They dedicated their life to this stuff. They did the research. They backed themselves. They believed it was going to crash and burn, whilst everybody else went, "Ha ha! You're all going to be wrong. You are wrong, and you're hemorrhaging money." We know how that story turned around, but what I wanted to focus on there is the conviction, okay? These people were shorting because they had a strong belief they were doing it. They weren't shorting it for 50 bucks risk. They're talking multi-millions and managed portfolios for their clientele. And as much as you might not like these individuals in this, uh, in this system that is the system, um, they're not all bad and they're not stupid. They are not stupid people. Sure, they can be greedy. Sure, they can be assholes. Sure, they can be pricks. And sure, they can take money. But there's also a lot of good ones that really want to do the, the best thing by their clients. And to do the best thing by their clients, they spend a lot of time trying to find the op options and the opportunities for their clients to make money on. So, GameStop. They're short GameStop. All of a sudden, Retail comes into the market and goes, screw the bankers, screw the hedge funds, we're going to buy it. And off they went. Who bought it first though? It was the people that decided to put this idea together. They got in early. They're the ones who said, hold, hold, hold. And the war cry spread out across the globe. It dominated news cycles in a global sense. It certainly caught my attention. I'm sure as hell has caught yours as well. Because it was pretty freaking cool. It was like, whoa. What's going on here? Now, I didn't buy any GameStop um, at all. As you can see from the chart, yes, GameStop did go up a huge amount. And I read about a bloke, um, Kitty Cat or Kitty Pussy Dog or I don't know, something, some weird internet meme name type thing. He put 53 grand in it. At one stage, his portfolio was worth 52 million. I hope he got out uh, or at least scaled some out because here we are uh, back down at what, 90 bucks. From a peak, let's let's let's, let's have a look. So we did 10x on the way up, and from the peak to where we are now, 
We're down 81%. Now, a lot of people know what that feels like because they went through the 2017 cycle or they just held on to something because they didn't know what to do with it. Now, what you're seeing here, and I, I don't mean this in any disrespect at all, you're seeing low education, like no, 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 low financial um, market education levels here, okay? This is all hype driven. Let's have a look at how this stock traded prior. Very little. Smooth, smooth, smooth. And then all of a sudden, Wooshka, off it goes. And there's these ginormous gaps that are, that are occurring on this. Now, people would have, on the, the, mark my words, people would have made money. I know that. People would have taken their profits or taken, taken some off the table. There will be people that made money. But I would suggest that it will be the minority. Because as the hype kicks off, and we've seen it in crypto and we'll see it again, you know, the people that weren't buying at 18,000 because it was too much. It was too much at 10,000. They wanted six. These are the same people that when it races up, they're buying it at 40 because it's going to keep going higher. Okay. So it's a different comparison, but the same, um, you know, same psychology behind it. We see here, woo, up we go, right? People buying all the way through here have been hurt unless they took a little profit on it or, you know, might have been a big profit. Um, it's just, it's painful for me to watch because, um, Again, you know, I've dedicated the last few years to this business to teach people about financial uh, literacy uh, when it comes to markets, that is, how to read a market. And yes, I teach trading courses, but I also do a hell of a lot of this stuff. Uh, so much of the stuff is free that I do. Even the bloody course is free. Um, but you do, it's not just for trading. It's to understand how markets operate, how they work, what to look out for, to just get more in your mind than just jumping on Twitter or Reddit or Facebook to get your information. It's empowering you to understand. And most people don't understand. And that's okay if they decide to just, you know, bury their heads in the sand and continue to chase that silver bullet. Well, they'll stay poor. And it sucks to say it, but the reality is those that don't commit don't get the results. They don't get the rewards for it. So people got really hurt here, really, really, really hurt. I can tell you what, I'm sure the guys at the Wall Street Bets group, and I, I, I have no source for this, but I understand how things work. I'm sure they probably did very well out of it. A, their subscriptions have probably gone through the roof. Uh, and B, I'm sure that they were in early and, uh, and they made money on that. Once again, a large chunk of money, the distribution from the, let's call it, you know, just for the sake of the example, from the poor, goes across to the wealthy. That's one thing to look at. Those people that were in early, they got wealthy saying, screw the banks, screw the hedge funds. We're going to do it together. Secondly, let's say I'm short. Let's say I'm a hedge fund manager and I'm short with my very strong conviction, right? My very strong conviction that GameStop, it's, it's not going to work. It didn't do very well through COVID, which is when it should work, blah, 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 whatever my thesis and theories may be. I still have that same conviction. Now, if I had that conviction at $12, do you think I've still got that conviction? And maybe even more conviction as it's gone higher? I dare say so. So maybe they covered their shorts, took a hit there, and just went, give me all you got. Anywhere up around here, give me all you got. Give me all you've got because this is a retail frenzy, hype-driven push higher. And do these people have strong hands? I don't think they do. I think that as soon as there'll be a little bit of selling, everyone's going to panic and get out because they don't know what they're doing. There will be the select few that follow the war cry and get absolutely steamed. Still be people holding it right now. There'll be people doing what they did in alt markets in 2017 through that ICO, but when they go, okay, well, if we could just get back up to the whole all-time highs, probably never will. Okay, probably never will. Does that help give you a little bit more perspective around these sorts of things? This is that's the, the reasoning behind it. The the other thing is, look, it's easier to say now. I know, and, and I didn't. You know, I've spoken to a lot of people about this, close friends and whatnot, associates. And for me, it was an experiment. I was I was keen to see what would happen. I did think that we'd probably see the big uh, big dump. I did, especially when they came out and they said they set a time for XRP. So let's go ahead and have a look at XRP now. Um, let's have a look, go back to this daily. So they said, uh, I think it was 8.30 AM 
specific standard time or whatever it was. The time is kind of irrelevant. But they said the time, and this happened, 57%. And then this happened, another 11%. And then, woo, that happened. All of this occurred before the date set. You know, it's it's all planned. So everyone should be buying on this particular date at this particular time. That is the smartest way to steal from somebody. If you've got a big following, all you've got to do is you've got to say, hey, at this time, everyone's going to be buying it. And we've got a big group of people. So you think everyone's going to sit back and go, oh, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm going to wait until that time. No, they're going to go and buy it now. And that's exactly what we saw. It pumped, it pumped like a mad dog. And then it dumped just as hard. And don't forget the war cry. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah, right. It's a pump and dump and people got hurt. And I hate that. I really, really hate that. I hate it when people invest into something they do not know, okay? And they don't learn because there's nothing, I mean, apart from maybe entering into a market and learning how to buy or sell or whatever, the lesson for, for, for a lot of people is going to be, I just tried trading or I just tried investing and I lost a lot of money, which might be the end of it for them. And that sucks because they were on the right journey. They just tried to jump into the F1 car from a bicycle and never driving a car. There's a lot of complexities in the market. You can look at this and you can say, well, with GameStop, and AMC, for example, you know, again, here's another one, another one of those ones they talked about. You can look at this and you can say, oh yeah, but it was Wall Street. Wall Street was the one that flogged everybody. You know, they, they came in and they shut the platform down, platforms down and they restricted trading and they did this and they did that. Yeah. It, are they gonna refund you your money? No. You gotta understand how it works. <laughs> you gotta understand how the game works. Yes, there are people out there manipulating stocks and, and cryptos. This is a prime example on the way up and on the way down. If you follow this manipulation and this bullshit that goes on, whether it be, if, you know, for the power of the people or whether you're a hedge fund manager and you follow, <laughs> it, it's just going to win badly. And I'm pumped on this, man. Like, I'm, it gives me the shits big time because it's normal people getting hurt that may never come back. And that is such a disservice to themselves. And this pump and dump shit, it's just got to stop. It won't stop. Now, the people that are complaining about, oh, the, you know, the SEC has done, done this and we've got, sorry, the, the hedge funds have done this and the platforms have done this and this is in the pocket of them and this is in the pocket of them. and Get over it. You made the decision. You didn't know the rules. You didn't know how the game was being played and you got fisted. Don't let it happen again. If you want power to the people, if you want decentralized um, trading and, 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 you know, asset classes, we're here. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. But you've got to learn. <laughs> you've got to learn. Otherwise, you can, be, you can be out there chasing wealth all your life and never have it because you have no plan. You have no structure. You have no idea. I've been in markets not just for 16 years. That's the time I've been trading. I've been in markets since I was 16 and my birthday is this month. I turned 37 this month. I have been in these before. I have been shafted every single time. My first share that I ever bought when I was 16 years old with a bit of help from dad because I wasn't able to buy them under my own name. A, called, a company called Phoenix Technology Limited. I put $3,500 into that at the time. And I bought it, I think, at 8.8 .8 cents. It went to 88 cents. I had $35,000 as a 16-year-old, and it happened like this. Whip! Straight up. Did I sell? No. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was just buying shares on a tip. And it went crazy. And then it went bankrupt, and I lost everything. Very important lesson for me. Thank goodness it came at 16. It was a lot of money for me at the time, but thank goodness it came at 16 because it taught me the importance of managing risk and actually knowing what the hell's going on. Education, I mean, I was told, education is your best investment. I'm like, yeah. Uh, my best investment is the one that makes you money, you dickhead. But the truth is it is. And I'm, look, this is not a, this is not a, 
uh, you know, a segue into selling something to you. It's not. It's just, it, it's really a, a passionate cry for you to think about the reality of things. Watch the big short again. Read the book. Understand the level of conviction when people are throwing around billions of dollars. These are not idiots. They're not. They know what they're doing. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Now let's jump across to silver. Doge is not in this list, but Doge did the same thing. So silver, I'm looking at silver right now. Wall Street Bet says, let's go silver. All right. Silver is a $1.4 trillion market cap on its own. $1.4 trillion. Crypto is at $1 trillion. The whole market is one tri- $1.4 trillion. And they think they're going to get a bunch of retail people to come in here and send it to a thousand bucks? Mate, do some math on that. Do some math on current market cap. 1,000, all right, divided by 40 times 1.4 trillion. That's the sort of thing you got to start looking at. It would wreck the whole world. More or less if it happened quickly, right? It would just be horrible. It's not set in realism. It's set in a... Uh, ugh, nearly let it out. It's set in a freaking fantasy land. Happy clappers. I love Anthony Robbins. I think he's helped a lot of people. But you go to his events and sometimes, Jesus Christ, you feel like you're in a cult. And maybe it is. I don't know. But that's the sort of thing that we're seeing at the moment. And I don't want you to fall prey to these cults. I want you to think about things. Use a bit of logic and tell you what, there will always be another trade. There will always be another great investment. There will always be another shyster trying to scam you out of your cash too. You know what I mean? Wall Street might not be talking about silver. But I tell you what, that pump group's talking about silver and it moved. Either way, whether it's hearsay or not, it's out there. And people are taking action based on bullshit. So, there you go. Um, One of these things that really, really, really fires me up, guys. And this is the, I mean, you can probably see the passion in it now. Like when I say the reason I started this business is, and people go, why do you, why, if you're such a good trader, why do you do this? Because I want to do this. This is a great business too. It's make, it makes me money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to, you know, play the trumpet. It's all about world happiness. Yay. No, I want to make a buck. I want to have a successful business. I, th- these are things that I want to do. And I want to expand outside of just being a trader and investor because it does get boring. All right. It does. I've been doing it for a long time. It gets freaking boring. All right. This has been something new for me. It's been fantastic. And the other thing is, is that when I started getting into crypto in July of 2017, there were people there that were selling their courses and, and just the stuff that they were shoveling was shit. It was absolute shit. Garbage. Um, and they were charging a lot. And that, that angered me. Uh, I really care about people. I do. Um, it really, really angered me on that. And I said, well, if they're going to do this, then I'm going to do it so people can actually get something that's worthwhile. All right. So here I am. It is a passion of mine. Let me tell you something. If I had have put the same amount of work, dedication, effort, uh, sacrifice into just trading and investing over the last three and a half years to build this thing, I would have made a shit ton more money. I did it because I want to do this. I did it because I don't want people getting hurt. I did it so that people understand, so that you can learn. I learned. I, it cost me a fortune from losses. It, it's done everything, everything for me now. But it took, it took commitment. It took, it took a real desire. And it took getting back up. Yeah? Don't let this stuff knock you down. If it has been, if it's hurt you, please, please, uh, get back up. You're in the right place. Uh, if, if you want to have a non, or no, I shouldn't say non-manipulated, because every market gets manipulated. But if you want to have it away from the the prying eyes of the powers that be, crypto is the place for you. All right. Oh, there you go. 
Um, look, while I'm here, I'll just do a quick look here uh, at the top 10. <clears throat> oh, question. Apart from your course, any way to stick, uh, is there any way to stick, to stick to you? Because it's quite hard to just watch a course and become a pro. Um, yeah, mate, the, we've got, um, live trading floor uh, and the community. So live trading floor, you get to see it's normally myself, but I'm going fishing more this year, bugger it. <laughs> uh, so it'll be myself and my, my team of mentors that will be doing, we do scans five days a week and I go through all these lists. I'll show you. Uh, I go through the full FTX margin list, all of these looking for trades. I go through the full Binance cross margin list. I go through the full Binance isolated margin list. Of course, we, we give you access to all of these lists. Uh, and I've recently started going back through all the Binance uh, spot pair lists against BTC and all the spot Binance pairs against USDT. Scan them every day, half an hour, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, depending on how much action there is. But you get to see what I do each day. You get to ask me questions. You get to the reasons. Like doing a course is one thing. Totally agree. It gives you, it gives you the... Um, the skill set to understand what to do, but the application of how to do it and the little micro bits, the little half a percent things, you, you need to have a hundred of those to bring them together to really get that real sharp edge to know what to do, when to do it. For example, when markets start to go sideways, most people will do really well on a run up or down, long or short, but when the market slows down and loses that momentum, they just hemorrhage money. So the portfolio is doing this and they're sitting at break even. Break even is not bad, by the way, it just shows you can manage your risk appropriately. You just need to take that next step. And that next step is being able to know when to stop. When do you go back in? Um, when to make sure that you're not getting that FOMO. Um, we've also got mentors. We've got the community there. So people can jump. You know, you can ask heaps of questions and whatnot. Look, the community is pretty rad. 240 people in here. Here's all the different. Oh, there's my little daughter. Her first day at school. Ha, that's today. <laughs> Whoa, go Charlie. But you can see all the stuff in here, right? This is what the Slack group's all about. And um, yeah, look, there's resources there um, to help you progress, move on. We've got apprenticeships, mentoring, all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's up to you. That's why the free course is there so that you guys can suck it and see and see if I'm full of it or not, really. Um, cheers, Brandon. Methwitch, thank you. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, I'm going this year, but I've, I've actually got a trip planned. 21st, 22nd, 23rd, back to 24th. Southern Bluefin Tuna in South Australia. Never done it before, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Darth Mark, that's that's it, mate. Um, this was honestly one of your best videos I've seen in a very long time. Ah, oh, thanks, mate. Thanks, Dean. Um, it, it, you can tell it comes, <laughs> it comes from a place of passion. Um, this is not made up. It's just, this is who I am. And I will have a scream every now and again if I feel passionately in a, sorry if I feel passionately about it, and I definitely do on this one. Okay, so let me just do a quick little have a sticky big Bitcoin high or low pushing up. Yeah, high or low here, high or low. Let's forget the Elon Musk Twitter thing. Um, I mean, obviously it's on the chart, can't forget it. But we got cyclicity coming in here. Sorry, I got super glary through that window. Um, high or low, we've broken up through that resistance, which I was really hopeful to see last night. We did. We pulled back, we rejected again. First time I've seen Bitcoin in the mid time frame starting to look a lot more bullish. Why? A higher low uh, and a higher high coming in. The cyclicity is still pretty average. Uh, it needs to kick on again. I, it just, I just want to see it carry. Cyclicity is a word you'll hear me use a lot and it means a lot. It's momentum, basically. It's, it's the bouncing ball. Momentum, not just in a straight line. That's why I like the word cyclicity because it's cycling, you know, it's working its way through. Um, the one that I do think is a superstar looking chart right now is Ethereum. Um, the, the break that we've had to all, all time highs is what I was after and the build up of these higher lows it's that pressure cooker that volcano that poof, she blows up eventually uh, well doesn't have to blow up eventually but if it is to break it it tends to break out with a fair bit of gusto it did yesterday uh, I really this is a chart that as you can see it's got a little red dot right there it's on my watch list uh, ultimate goal or ultimate plan would be for it to pull back to here get a cradle off of that level uh, in saying that you know, if I was to see this start to cycle really nicely on the lower time frames, I'd be looking for boosters, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, a lot of the market's still pretty crap. Let's have a look. Some start to move, XRP, forget about, forget about it for me for now. Um, leaving that alone. 
Bitcoin Cash, it's got to get up through this resistance point. You know, it, it's 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 really trying, and the point it's coming off of, it's a really sexy point, really strong uh, resistance, acted as support. Check out the weekly, uh, looking pretty tasty. Higher lows, higher high. I mean, it looks it looks primed. Uh, a lot of the market does look primed, but I'm not I'm not having a bite of the cherry at the moment, just because we are lacking that cyclicity. We're trying. It's got to get above here, and it's got to do it smoothly. Uh, Litecoin really flexing today. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I had a level drawn in on the other chart. God, it's good to have my super duper PC back again. So you can see there was resistance. I was actually watching it this morning for a breakout. Uh, it didn't build in enough for me. Now I'm just seeing if I can get anything into this level. Um, I'm just waiting at the moment. Again, it's not really, it's not really that great at the moment. Um, but it's in the list because I want to keep an eye on it. Uh, when we come now to EOS, it's just crap. I mean, look, there is a higher low, there is a higher high, but let's get a bigger picture perspective of what's going on here. Bugger all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, um, it's got to do a, a fair bit more there. Look, I might jump on the lower time frames if it does have a bit of a squirt to the upside, but you know what? It's um, it's looking pretty ho-hum. BSV is dead to me. BNB, what a ripper. What a ripper. Now, I know a lot of you guys that are in the community took that little pesky winner. What a demon, eh? Cracking move. Just waiting to see. Maybe the eight. You know, the eight's probably a good time frame. Uh, the 12, and uh, dare I say it, even the daily, if it does have a deeper pullback. But again, a really nice trend, keeping a close eye. Nothing going on. Cardano had a bit of a pop goes the weasel uh, yesterday and the day before. Pretty solid moves through there. Um, again, there's higher low, higher low. Push to all time. I think it's all time highs. Uh, cyclicity wise, mm, not the four, the eight perhaps in here, but again, it's not, it's not perfect. It's got to do a bit more carry through for me. And finally, link. And look, look I know the top tens changed. You know, um, it is what it is. Again, another one that does look set to uh, potentially have a move higher. Simply being, uh, we've got these higher lows that are continually coming higher uh, as our highs remain relatively the same. So, the market's looking really strong, guys. Um, I'm really liking the look of it all. I think, you know, I think we've got the potential to do really well this year. Um, and hence my rant. I don't want you to do badly. I don't want you to get hurt because you can do really well. You can kill it. Absolutely kill it. If you decide to hunker down and kill it, you would be amazed in what you will achieve in even something as short as six months. If you commit to it, and that may mean you're not going out drinking with your buddies, you're going to stay home, you're going to work, you're going to study, you're going to learn, you're going to practice, you're going to make your mistakes, you're going to log your trades, get your feedback, go over them, treat it as a business, make a commitment to yourself. Um, I did it, I've done it, and I did it again with the business, um, and I'm very proud of those things. And I'll tell you what, when you get there, God, it feels good, and money's money feels good, but the feeling of doing something that you set your mind to, really dedicating yourself to it, there's not much better feeling than that, except when someone sends me a message and says, mate, I am now a full-time trader, or I'm financially independent, or whatever it may be. If that's you, I love hearing those messages. Do not ever feel like you can't direct message me, because that is what makes me the happiest <laughs> uh, I can be. That and my little six-year or five-year-old on a first day at school today. Speaking of which, nope, it's not pickup time yet. I'm going to leave it at that. If you do decide that you want to take the bull by the horn, so to speak. There is the free course, tradercob.com. If you don't, hey, good luck to you. Whatever it is you choose to do, choose to do it and don't be a follower. All right? Love to you. I'll, um, I'll be back. I'll be back again. <laughs>